All right. In the last episode, I was in the Bridge Fort, which was a four-man base that I wound up liking quite a bit. But all good things have to come to an end at some point. It's time to move on to a new base. And the base that I have chosen is the Church on the Hill, which is one of the two five-man bases in the region we're in, which is Cascade Hills, also known as the Foothills. Being a five-man base, you cannot move into the Church on the Hill without a minimum of five members in your community, but you will also need to pay a thousand influence to move in. This base is just a stone throw away from the bridge fort, and it's right in the middle of the map. And the reason why that is such a good advantage is because you're basically in the middle of everything. Your outposts, the lootable town centers, the other enclaves, any kind of random mission that's generated. You're right in the middle, so everything will be in a nice, accessible distance from your headquarters. On the other hand... One of the peculiarities about this base is actually its relationship to another home base site that is really close by. In fact, they're in the same town center, and that would be the corner office. What makes it so strange is that they're both five-man bases. It's just odd to have two bases that are so close to each other that are the same base size. You would think that either a six- or an eight-man base would be here in order to diversify your strategic home site options. Anyways, let's quickly take a look at the base's appearance. It is indeed a church, and it is indeed on a hill, which gives me a little bit of a State of Decay 1 vibe because the first base of the State of Decay 1 campaign is a church. It also features this graveyard in the back, which does not serve any mechanical purpose. It's just there for looks. It's aesthetic, and it's really annoying because when you want to park, it is in the way, and you have to drive around it. On the other hand, the base features this gigantic bell tower, which is a pretty cool sniper perch, and it actually does have a mechanical function in the game, which I'll discuss later on. And I guess there's also this graffiti of a dog riding a horse on the side of the church. Huh. Anyway, when you do wind up buying this location, this is immediately what it's going to look like afterwards. The bell tower is a special type of watchtower that will need to be fixed up before it is operational. And then there are two more locations that you can tear down. They will give you five building materials each. And when they are cleared, you will have two more customizable small facility slots. Okay, so I have stripped everything out of the base and repaired everything to give us kind of a blank canvas to make the base whatever we want it to be. And what we have is one large outdoor facility and five small facilities, two of which are outdoor, three of which are indoor, and our permanent buildings that we are not allowed to tear out is, of course, a storeroom, a command center, and then the bell tower, which functions as a special type of watchtower. This is what I have chosen for my customizations on the Church on the Hill. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at each of them. I'll tell you why I chose them, but first, let's look at the unique building to the church the bell tower, and what it does. So in addition to being a standard watchtower, you can also ring the bell, which I'm going to do right now, and you will see that our threat level jumps up very dramatically, and we will have a zombie attack imminently, and defending our base will be our de facto leader, Drillbit, using our Kodiak XL and the DLC weapon Apocalypse Bat. Now here's the big question, why would you ever want to ring this bell and cause zombies to attack other than to perhaps kill zombies? The answer is zombie threat level manipulation. When you defeat this bell ringing wave of zombies, your threat level will decrease dramatically. The value of this is once a day, you'll probably want to activate your facility's additional options, each which cause noise. And if the noise is high enough, it will cause periodic zombie attacks. If you are not there to personally repel a zombie attack, then your community will spend three ammo supply in order to defeat the zombie wave. In other words, sound can be a drain on your ammunition stock if you're not there to personally repel it. So, what you can do is ring the bell on your timetable and force a zombie attack to come out when you're ready for it, not when they want to attack, defeat it, reduce the threat level, and then activate all of your base's noisy bonus features, get them all out of the way because the threat reduction lasts about 30 minutes, which is enough time to get all of those additional base abilities done, and that means you won't have to worry as much 
about those random zombie attacks occurring because your base is too noisy and then risking losing an additional three ammo because either A, you couldn't be bothered to return back to base or you're on the other side of the map. With the mystery of the bell tower resolved, let's take a look at the customizable facilities that I have chosen to plug in. The first two are the ones I consider obligatory, the infirmary and the workshop. No infirmary means it is a real pain to recover from injuries, and no workshop means you can't repair weapons and you can't salvage weapons. Also really annoying. The third one I have there is a kitchen, which is optional. I have it there to take advantage of one of my community members' cooking skill. You should put in one that also takes advantage of one of your community members' skills. In the two small outdoor facilities, I have a pair of gardens. They would be hydroponics facilities, but I still need to find a utilities guy for that. However, they're doing just fine in the meantime. One of them is planted for food, and one of them is planted for medicine in order to neutralize both our food consumption and our demand for medicine from the infirmary. The only way you can get a garden to grow medicine is if you have a community member who has the gardening skill and then you advance it into the herbalism advanced skill. Now you might think it's overkill to grow medicine because the infirmary only drains two meds per day, but I am Big Pharma. I am the evil umbrella core. I am using the additional medicine to create bulk plague cure, which sells for tremendous amounts of influence. And the way to keep that going is specifically to not remove the plague hearts, because once you remove the plague hearts, the plague zombies are gone, and that's the end of my supply of plague samples. So I need people to suffer under the oppression of plague zombies so that I can sell them the cure to their problems. And lastly, for my large facility, I have chosen the lounge to increase morale. Now I know, I can hear it. Some of you would prefer a more pragmatic large facility like a forge. But let me tell you something. My community has got to play Xbox. We have the electricity for the base and the Xbox mod only can be installed in the lounge. So that lounge is going to get built. Overall... The church on the hill is kind of a uh, kind of a meh base. Its main advantage is that it's right in the middle of the map, so it's really easy to run missions, but it's mainly disappointing that you don't get a second large facility, so it's only a little bit more flexible than the bridge fort, and it's not even like it has more facilities than the bridge fort, because the bridge fort has that fifth small facility. It's just that it is a non-customizable second watchtower. At any rate, like this video if it helped you to decide whether to move in or not move into the Church on the Hill, and subscribe for future State of Decay 2 content, and of course remember that you don't have to be good to get good.